The movie opens with the strict routine of a man called Salvador Campadonico. He's a tall, good-looking man, very fit and athletic. Every day he wakes up early to exercise and sleeps late because of work. He has a lot of responsibilities on his shoulders as the heir to an architectural multimillionaire empire in Spain, and he's willing to do anything to make his rigid father proud. For that reason, Salvador is always working and thinking about new ideas for the company. He's ambitious, a workaholic, and an overachiever. With only work and no play, he's a rather lonely man. Even though he's attractive, it's been a long time since he last dated, and he has yet to find a woman who can follow his strict routine of work. The woman that enters a relationship with him has to bear in mind that his work will always be his priority. Salvador has a new challenge to conquer. He is planning on building the first seven-star hotel of his family's chain outside of Spain, in Cuzco, Peru. The project is huge and challenging even for an accomplished man like Salvador. If it doesn't work out, it's his head on a plate, being heir or not. His father makes sure that he understands that. Still, it's a project that he's looking forward to. He sees it as an opportunity to impress his father and bring even more money to the family. He travels to Peru to oversee the construction of the hotel. The city he's staying in is full of history and monuments from centuries back. It's the perfect location for a seven-star hotel because it has a view of the Andes Mountains, and it's a vacation spot for tourists from all over the world. Salvador can barely contain his excitement when he arrives and films the place where the hotel will be built. The downside to a huge hotel in the middle of a small historical city is that it will take away the bucolic vibe it offers, mainly because they chose to build it right next to the centenary Spanish church. Neither Salvador nor his company cares about that, though. They only want the best place to build their next business. Salvador is staying at an old, big house in downtown Cusco. One evening, his door won't open so he has to go stay at a hostel because it's pouring rain. The hostel is cozy and romantic, completely different from the expensive hotels Salvador is used to. There is a live show happening right when he enters, and while he searches for a place to sit, he hears a voice that catches his attention. It's a woman singing about love. She is pretty with long honey blonde hair and blue eyes. Her voice is beautiful, and Salvador can't stop staring at her. When she stops singing, she and the other guests start to excitedly dance. Salvador watches in confusion and interest at the woman fluidly moving her body. Another guest notices him standing there like a tree and approaches. He wonders about the blonde dancing with a piece of paper on her behind, shaking her backside in another man's face. The woman replies that it's a traditional dance in which the woman chooses a man she likes to light the paper on her backside with a lit candle. She hands him one and tells him to try his luck with the blonde. Salvador awkwardly dances with the blonde and lights her paper. He's expecting something to happen after that, but Ariana, the blonde, leaves him hanging. After dancing and singing, Ariana is alone when Salvador appears like a ghost behind her. She is holding a tray full of paint and doesn't see him behind her, so when she turns, they bump into each other. Paint flies everywhere. Salvador takes off his now dirty coat, mentioning it was an expensive item. Just by looking at him, Ariana can see that he's a rich man. His fancy clothes and perfect hairstyle make him stand out in the humble family hostel. Ariana has no clue what he's doing there since it's obvious he's not a guest. He would never stay at a place like that. Ariana's aunt, and the owner of the hostel, Lichai, knows who Salvador is and tells Ariana to find him a room to stay in that matches his expensive tastes. Ariana rolls her eyes but does as Lichai asks. While she's taking him to a room, Ariana can't stop dancing and having fun. She's different from any woman Salvador ever met. She isn't afraid of speaking her mind, and she isn't impressed by his wealth or family name. Quite the opposite. Ariana doesn't care about money or vanity. She loves nature, her culture, and living a simple lifestyle in her hometown. She's the complete opposite of Salvador. While he likes to have control over every single detail in his life, Ariana prefers to go with the flow. Salvador thinks three times before speaking his mind, while Ariana is honest and open. She even tells him that he needs to relax after 10 minutes of talking to him. It's refreshing and different from what Salvador is used to. Ariana shows him the room he's staying in, and he invites her for a drink. With no preamble, Ariana tells him that she doesn't like handsome men, especially not ones with a coat that costs more than her rent. Still, Salvador can be charming when he wants and convinces her to give him a chance. While drinking, they find out they have more differences than similarities. Salvador isn't looking for a relationship, and Ariana is. He doesn't mind sleeping with someone after just meeting them, and Ariana does. Still, despite knowing that he won't do her any good, Ariana is attracted to his bright blue eyes and sharp tongue. Salvador is attracted to her effortless beauty and sensuality. It's like fire meeting gasoline. They sleep with each other after meeting once. The following morning, Salvador wakes up alone. For the first time in years, he oversleeps. Ariana is already up, helping her aunt at the hostel when he approaches them smiling from ear to ear. He accompanies Ariana while she's doing her chores and then they go to his room. There, he explains that he's staying there for a year or two, to build a hotel. He thinks she will be impressed by his work and project for Cusco, but Ariana is upset. She sees the hotel as a modern monstrosity in a place where the biggest attraction is history. She calls him a colonizer for bringing his hotel to their bucolic city under the excuse of generating more tourism. 
and money. To make things worse, Salvador confesses to being interested in buying the hostel, because it has the best view in the city. Ariana argues with him that her aunt won't sell the hostel, no matter the price, but for Salvador, a man who was born rich, everyone has a price. Ariana leaves him alone after confirming that what they had the night before was a one-time thing. Salvador is confused by her anger, he doesn't understand why she can't see the advantage of having a huge hotel in her city. Ariana is angry with herself. Salvador represents everything that she doesn't like, money, greed, and arrogance. She can't believe that she fell for his witty comments and slept with him. If she had known that he was planning to build a hotel in Cuzco as if it was Dubai, she would have told him to get lost. Although she loves traveling and she's barely home, she loves her hometown with a passion. It's full of tradition, culture, and history, and that is priceless for her. No money in the world can build a place like that. To make matters worse for her, Licha is planning to sell a part of her property to Salvador. She can't believe her aunt. For the next couple of days, Ariana is in a terrible mood. Whenever she sees Salvador, she calls him a different name. She can't stand his face and what he represents. For her, he's a robot that only cares about money and work. In turn, Salvador is having the time of his life. For the first time, he's able to relax in a calm place and get to know new people. He gets especially close to Lichai, since she always indulges him. He still works, but now that he's away from home and his father, he doesn't have to worry as much as before. Moving on, Salvador continues staying at the hostel and preparing to build his seven-star hotel. One day, his worker finds a box buried underground and brings it to him. When he opens it, he finds that it belongs to Ariana. It's a box full of mementos from her past. He takes it to her and Ariana is emotional when she sees the contents. She quickly gets rid of Salvador, thanking him for digging up her memories. He's confused again because he thought for sure she would be happy with him. Despite her harsh behavior towards him, Salvador genuinely likes Ariana. He thinks she's fun and spontaneous, a breath of fresh air for him. He just doesn't understand how important the hostel is for her. When Ariana's parents died, she went to stay there with Lichai. She grew up in the hostel, and it's part of her life. She never thought she wouldn't be able to return there whenever she missed it. The box is full of trinkets from her childhood and pictures of her with her mother. Ariana can't stop the tears when she goes through it and remembers all the good times she spent in the hostel. Salvador continues to go after Ariana to change her mind about him. He asks her to take him on a backpacking tour from Cuzco to Machu Picchu. Ariana is the tour guide from the hostel, so she has to accept whether she likes it or not. There was going to be a big group, but then everyone cancelled, with only Salvador left. Ariana tries to cancel the trip because there weren't enough people, but Salvador insists on paying for the vacancies. He is dying to go on the trip with her, he even took some time off from his work. With no excuse anymore to cancel, Ariana has to go on a trip with him as company for five days. Salvador is surprisingly humble for a man that has so much money. He goes around town with her, tasting all the typical foods and indulging in traditional rituals. The only problem for Ariana is that whenever he mentions how great his hotel would be for the city, she gets mad at him and they argue. They are both firms in their beliefs. Ariana tries to explain why she doesn't want a huge hotel infecting her city with its modernity, but Salvador refuses to accept her opinion. He keeps trying to make her see that it would bring more money to the city. For the sake of their trip, and because he doesn't want to argue with her all the time, Salvador suggests a truce. They are not going to talk about the hotel anymore. Ariana accepts it. After their truce, things between them go back to being carefree and fun. Salvador is a man of the city, so he rarely took time to enjoy things in nature. Ariana, on the other hand, loves nature. He starts seeing that there's beauty in silence and in watching the stars in the middle of a veil. Ariana teaches him to mediate and stop worrying so much about everything, and he does. It's surprising for him how he's letting things go during that trip, opening his mind to other things, not only work. He even sleeps during the day, something that he has never done before. In turn, Ariana finds his discoveries funny. He's like a kid after finding out that Santa left him gifts. When they reach their first destination, a Korean couple asks if they want help taking pictures and they accept. Salvador then lies and replies in Korean that he and Ariana are a couple on their honeymoon sighting around Peru. When Ariana finds out, she laughs about it. They start talking about marriage, and again they disagree on a subject. Ariana doesn't believe in love. She thinks marriage is like chains that bind a person, not something she would like for herself. She prefers to have tattoos because they last more. Salvador not only believes in love, but he's waiting for it. He has a busy routine so he never had a chance to find someone to love. Still, he believes people can find love no matter the situation, and it's surprising for him that an artist like Ariana thinks so cynical about love. He doesn't push her for answers, though he knows there is a story behind her hatred for marriage and love. Their truce lasted for five days. When they are hiking in the middle of the woods, Salvador's phone starts to ring. It's full of messages and notifications from his father. He wants to answer the messages because it's his job, but Ariana grabs the cell phone from him and it ends up breaking. Salvador gets upset about it. 
He knows his father is going to pester him for his lack of communication, and disappointing his father is his biggest weakness. Ariana tries to make him see that he doesn't need to work all the time, but Salvador had enough of her judgment. He tries to understand her and her world while she only criticizes him. She doesn't understand the importance of that hotel to him. After years of trying to get his father to trust him, he has the opportunity. If he messes it up, his father will be furious. After arguing, Salvador storms out and Ariana berates herself for talking too much. He gives her the silent treatment and Ariana can't bear it. To get in his good graces again, she takes him to a special place that tourists never go to. It's an old Inca ruin with a crystalline swimming pool. Salvador is enchanted by the place and soon forgets his cell phone or his father. They swim for some time, talking about their lives. He asks if she knows where she's going after Cusco, but she doesn't have anywhere planned yet. Salvador admires her courage in traveling alone, another thing that differentiates them. He likes the routine and the control he has in his life. In turn, she loves freedom and to do whatever she wants every day. As she talks about her life, Salvador tries to kiss her again. At first, she's hesitant because she's afraid of getting too involved with him, mainly because they are going their separate ways eventually. Their attraction is already more than she can handle because he does things that she doesn't agree with. Salvador insists that they enjoy the moment, and they end up kissing again. It's easy to forget real life and their divergence in opinion when they are having so much fun with each other. They finally reach Machu Picchu after days of hiking by themselves. By the end, they are acting like a couple, caressing and holding hands. Ariana is sad that they have to go back. She enjoyed their time together a lot, and she knows when they go back to Cusco, she's going to distance herself. She's developing feelings for him, and that makes her uncomfortable. She sees dating and relationships as taking away her precious freedom, and she's not ready to commit. On the other hand, Salvador is half in love with Ariana already. He admires her not only for her beauty but her lifestyle and authenticity. He hopes he can convince her to stay in Cusco and see where their relationship can lead them. When they are returning on a bus, it starts raining and Ariana gets anxious. It's the first time Salvador sees her decomposed. To make things worse, the bus gets into a small accident in the middle of the highway and it triggers Ariana's past trauma. It's so bad that Salvador decides to get off the bus with her and walk back to the city. He's quiet during their walk, not sure what to say to her. Ariana is somber, a mood that doesn't fit her bigger-than-life personality. Back at the hostel, Ariana leaves Salvador and goes straight to her room to brood. Salvador worriedly asks Lichai what could have triggered Ariana. She explains that when Ariana was 13, she and her parents got into an accident, and they passed away. Ariana was the only one to survive. Knowing about the accident helps Salvador understand Ariana a bit better. He knows why the hostel is so important to her now. It was the place she moved into when her parents passed away. Half of her childhood was spent there. It also makes sense that, though she loves the place, she's always traveling somewhere else. The memories are hurtful to her, so she runs. When Salvador is alone in his room, reality comes crashing in. His father is upset with him, and he has hundreds of emails to answer. To make things worse, his father isn't happy with the project again and wants Salvador to buy more land to make the hotel bigger. He even threatens to take money from his inheritance if he doesn't fix the problem. Salvador has to go to a meeting with the mayor of Cusco to see if there is anything they can do to build a bigger building like his father wants. Meanwhile, Ariana is crying her eyes out in her bedroom. Lichai comforts her, but it's hard for Ariana to forget all her traumas. The next day, Ariana and Salvador meet again. She isn't cold to him, quite the contrary. After the way he helped her and respected her pain during the bus accident, she couldn't be mad at him anymore. As long as they didn't talk about buildings or hotels, their relationship was good. They even go to a party together after Salvador invites himself. At the party, Salvador sees a side of Peru that he wouldn't be able to as a tourist. It's the tradition and culture of a people that have lived there for generations. At the end of the night, he and Ariana are very happy and comfortable with each other. Ariana even considers the party their first official date. Salvador is over the moon. He can't even remember the last time he has been so happy. The only problem now is his father's insistence that they build a bigger hotel. His father threatens him again, this time to put an end to the project Salvador worked so hard for. With no option left, he tries to convince Lichai to sell part of the hostel. Lichai doesn't want to sell her hostel, she wants to remain there for the rest of her life. Salvador makes her a proposal that has a lot of money involved, and for the first time, Lichai is cautious with Salvador. Now she understands why Ariana was so upset with him at the beginning. Salvador knows that Ariana is going to be upset when she finds out that he proposed to the hostel. He enjoys his time with her while it lasts, playing a song about love on the piano while she sings. Ariana has no idea that he's willing to destroy a part of her memories and childhood to build his hotel. She thought that maybe he would change his mind after getting to know the city he was trying to destroy. The following morning, Ariana finds the contract with the proposal that Salvador gave to Lichai. What is worse, Lichai is thinking about selling it. Ariana starts crying and decides that it's time for her to move. Lichai tells her she's being a coward running away from her problems again. Ariana doesn't want to hear that she's acting immature, much less that she may be saying goodbye to someone that could be important to her. 
It's obvious that she likes Salvador, she's half in love with him after getting to know him better. Lichai advises her not to run from him because she might regret it later. The main issue, though, isn't Salvador. It's the fact that Ariana can't let go of her past. It haunts her, so she tries running away from it. At the same time, she sees the hostel as solid proof of the good moments she spent there with her family. It's her home. If she doesn't have the hostel to come back to, she's truly alone in the world. She packs her bags after her talk with Lichai and gets ready to leave. Salvador goes after her, but she refuses to talk to him. His father appears right at that moment and Salvador has to decide between welcoming his obnoxious father, or going after the woman he's in love with. He goes with his father. His father can't stop talking about his investments and that Salvador is a failure. Salvador is fed up with his father and can only think about Ariana. Lichai appears and informs them that she won't sell her hostel. She feels sorry for Salvador, but she doesn't want to sell something so important to her and her family. His father keeps insisting with him that he has to convince Lichai to sell the hostel, and Salvador finally has enough. He spent months getting to know the city and the people there. Ariana showed him that there are more important things in life than money and greed. No matter what he does, his father is going to be upset and disappointed, so there is no point in trying. He quits his job and tells his father that he doesn't identify with the company anymore. His father is shocked. Salvador quickly goes after Ariana, before she could disappear somewhere in the world. Lichai has no idea where she went, so he has to pray for fate to help him. He goes to the train station and takes a train to the place Ariana had said she wanted to visit. When he arrives at his destination, he starts going around asking people if they have seen Ariana. He goes everywhere and can't find her. At the end of the day, he's sad and desperate. He cries by himself while watching the sunset because he thinks he lost his chance. After such a lonely existence, only worrying about work, he finally had a shot at being happy. He let his father destroy it. He spends days looking for Ariana. On his last day before he went back to Spain, he receives a message that his other phone, the one Ariana accidentally broke, had been turned on. He now had her localization, so he quickly packs his bags to go after her. He grabs a ride with a group of YouTubers and goes straight there. Meanwhile, Ariana has no idea that he's looking for her. In her mind, her aunt sold the hostel and Salvador already started building his monstrosity of a hotel. After days of traveling with a group of strangers, another thing that he would have never done before, he arrives at the place Ariana is staying. He sees her organizing books in an open library at the beach and approaches. Ariana tries to not show her emotions, but when he starts talking, her eyes fill with tears. He informs her that he left his job and that Lichai misses her. He also wants to take a sabbatical and stay at the beach with her. Ariana doesn't know what to tell him. Her heart is almost jumping out of her chest and she's happy that he looked for her for days. If she didn't believe in love before, now she does. As for Salvador, he's willing to drop anything for her. He already lived a life of work and routine, but Ariana taught him how to really live. In the end, Ariana's walls crumble for Salvador. She lets him in and stops running. In turn, Salvador lets go of his control over every detail in life and gives in to her.